women. This program focuses on women empowerment and a major cause of sexual gender-based violence against women and girls living in Liberia. Our guest for today is uh, Ms. Felicia Ketonka. She's the program officer of Equality Now and Ampo Traditional Practices. This is CTV Africa. My name is Chris Williams. Welcome back to the program Journal Screen. My name is Chris Williams and our guest for today is from Equality Now. She's the program officer, Felicia Ketonka. And today we are discussing FGM or Harmful traditional practices, mainly female genital mutilation. Madam, you are highly welcome to our platform. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, now that uh, Liberia is a very, very big country and that you are here, how do you feel of being in Liberia for a few days of being here? Yeah, uh, we are very grateful that we have been able to come to Liberia to engage with women's rights organization and to understand the context of hum human rights and women's rights. Uh, in, in Liberia. Equality Now is an international and governmental organization that focuses on the rights of women and girls. Uh, we use law reform as our platform to enhance the rights of women and girls around the world and we focus on four areas, one being end harmful practices which focuses on FGM and child marriage, sexual and gender based violence, sex trafficking and legal equality. That's so great. Ah, but I would still like to be a little bit questioner. Mm. I would like to know what motivated you in uh, getting into such uh, advocacy because there are a lot of people that really don't like to talk about sensitive issues around the world. Yes. I have seen how the world responds to a young girl or even women when they want to take up leadership position, when they want to speak up about their rights. And that is what has motivated me to join the women's movement, not just in Kenya, but even at a regional level in Africa. We're not in all African countries, but we work in several African countries in, uh, in Africa, including Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Burkina Faso, Mauritania, and so on. I think um, the executive order by former President Ellen Johnson Sarnif is, is uh, welcome. We need to look at it in terms of uh, how do we move from executive order or the bans to a more sustainable way of addressing FGM through the law? The current executive order is, uh, is a challenge because one, it also does not really protect uh, the young girls because there is a loophole on the issue of consent whereby if a parent can consent on their girl or daughter to go through FGM, then it means that the law can, they cannot be held accountable by the law enforcement agencies towards that. I think it is important we recognize um, it is not sustainable for us to speak about the issue of consent in context of FGM. FGM is a tradition practices. There are certain measures that have been put by this system, the societal system that promotes FGM, to ensure people are able to, 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 to enforce the, the tradition within the communities. And so when you talk about consent, for example, let's say a woman who is above 18 doesn't not want to go through FGM, but then because of the way society is set up to engage in the society you have, to have undergone this uh, in some of the communities and some of the counties, then that means this woman has no choice. So even if at the age, uh, if she's above 18 years and she wants to go through FGM, it's not really actual consent, it's more of the system of the society has coerced that woman to say now I need to go through FGM so that I can be a respected member of the community. If a girl uh, uh, is above 18 and uh, she don't, don't want to go to FGM, mm. but she do it because of society. Mm. But looking at the fact now that she may not even want to do it, but she may be influenced by money, mm. maybe because of poverty, she don't have the head, and somebody will come and say, okay, I'm promising you. Mm. Like, if you want to go this just to be my maybe sex pet, because mm. FGM, if that part of you is removing that, mm. you don't have anything, it's for anything. Mm. I will pay you 
just to be into this car. Mm. Do you, don't you think that is also bad? Like I said, those are some of the issues of the systems that society has created, whether knowing or unknowingly, to ensure that they are enforcing uh, FGM on women. Either way, whether a woman wants it or doesn't want it, want it there is a way society has structured itself around this woman and this woman has no choice and has to go through FGM. Why in case I'm a woman, mm. okay, I'm out there, I'm watching this program, mm. I'm, I'm listening to Felicia and she's uh, elaborating very well on FGM practices mm. and now I want to know, do FGM have any positive impact on my life? FGM is a harmful practice. It is also a description of the set in terms of discrimination of women and girls. If you look at the way FGM manifests in most societies, it is used to tame a woman in one way or the other. It, for example, when you go through FGM in some communities, you are uh, taken for marriage even if you have not reached that marriage. That means your life now has, has, has come to a halt, you have become you're not able to continue with your education. You're not able to build your life, your career the way you would have wanted because now after FGM, you've gotten married. Then there's the other communities where FGM is done to control the sexuality of a woman. This is to make sure that a woman does not own her sexuality. It is under the, the, the control of the society. Then there are other places where FGM is practiced um, to make sure that the women do not uh, go out and meet other, uh, other men. But when you look at uh, FGM, the way it's back, and also look at the male perspective of male circumcision, all these things do not arise. We don't take male uh, boys and men for circumcision because we want to control their sexuality or because we want them to be married off. So there's a certain aspect of discrimination and human rights violation that is very unique to FGM. Now looking at the aspect of stigma, mm. if you are a woman, if like you're in my culture mm. Now, mm. if you only go FGM, maybe you are married and uh, your husband notices that he's not uh, getting what he wants to get from a woman, maybe he tried to cheat on you and notice that mm. somebody up there that happy only go FGM, mm. that person is better than you, mm. they pack out and leave a uh, uh, relationship because mm. of that. Because there are a lot of cases surrounding why people break up in the marriages today mm. because of FGM. So I want to know, is it only happening like the year because uh, you put now, it's a equality now, it's an international uh, NGO. FGM everywhere in the world is accompanied by stigma. Stigma, as I would go again back to the issue of a society, how it has put measures to ensure women go through FGM. Stigma is one of them. And it even relates to the issue of concept because when you have gone, uh, you're in a community where they support FGM and you are isolated and stigmatized for not having gone through FGM. Then that's where it pushes the issue of now, as a woman, if you want to be accepted in this society, then go through FGM. Stigma is not unique to Liberia. It even happens back in my country, Kenya. But in Kenya, we are fortunate we have an anti-FGM law. And even under that law, it recognizes uh, stigma as one of the offenses. So in a community where a woman is living and she has not gone through FGM, members of that community are not allowed to call her names or to isolate her from being part of that community. We need to be able to separate the issue of Sunday and FGM because Sunday is a space for women. It is a space for women to learn from each other. It is a space for women to empower each other. However, also we have to recognize that FGM happens within the Sunday among many other positive activities that continue in the Sunday. But FGM in itself is a violation of human rights. So my appeal to the people of Liberia is that even as we continue with the positive work that happens around the Sunday, we need to isolate the issue of FGM and say we can go to the Sunday but then come out of there without having practiced FGM. Wow, thanks very much. Uh, if you are just joining us, this is a reminder that you are watching CTV Africa. We have to take a short break when we come back to continue our discussion. Welcome back. Uh, 
This is the program Janashway. My name is Chris Williams. And today we are with the program officer of the uh, organization Quality Now. And uh, we are discussing uh, FGM or harmful practices. And uh, this is a regional platform where she's here to elaborate more on FGM. So, Madam, you are welcome once again. Mm. So, as we were saying, mm. FGM is a very serious issue, mm. issue that we need to check out mm. from a serious perspective. Yes. So before I go into why you are here, I want to know more about our zero tolerance because uh, there are a lot of uh, practitioners or FGM working group within like where I say, okay, the mm. Senate is saying that uh, we want FGM to be an age of concept mm. and aspect. That is, if you reach 18, you want to go on for FGM, you mm. can go well in it. Mm. Or after you cross the age 18, FGM, mm. you are subjected to FGM. Mm. Other group is saying, we don't want anything, we don't want to hear anything about FGM, mm. we want zero tolerance in like mm. What do you have, what's the organization take from that? Yes, in the respect of Liberia, from talking to the different women's rights uh, activists, the issue of tolerance becomes a um, subject they are nervous about because it is not really elaborated what exactly zero tolerance means. Zero tolerance does not mean that we throw away FGM and, and sand it together. It is only that aspect of FGM we want to say, remove it completely. But the sand as it is, it can remain as an place and an institution, a social institution, where women can still uh, engage. I find the fear to be around the issue when you say zero tolerance, a lot of people think you mean the Sunday as well should be ab uh, abolished. This is a harmful practice. It is a human rights violation. If we are saying we want women and girls to consent to being violated, then what are we saying as a society? What is our standard that people of Africa and even the people of Liberia, what is our stand when we say it is okay for women to consent to a violation of human rights? There are four types of FGM. There's type one, which is clitoridectomy. There's type two, which is excision, which uh, clitoridectomy is the removal of the clitoris. Excision is the removal of the labia and the clitoris, depending on the community. And then there's type three, which is uh, infibulation which means you cut the whole genitalia of the woman and then sew it. Uh, it remains a very small part for that woman to pass urine. And this is mostly practiced in um, uh, more Arabic countries and even in places where Islam is practiced, but it has nothing to do with Islam. One, we have partnered with several uh, civil society organizations in Liberia with the aim of trying to educate the people on the ground, the communities in, in, in different counties in Liberia on the issue of FGM. We would like to, for them to understand how, how we see FGM and why we see FGM as a human rights foundation. We are also here through the partnership we have with our partners to make them understand and see that FGM is not something that is just unique to Liberia, but it's a global phenomenon. And very uh, many other countries have moved forward and recognized this as a human rights violation, and they have made consensus to end FGM. So we would urge the government of Liberia, we would urge the society, the people of Liberia, to reconsider the issue of FGM moving forward. I want to know what is equality like you are doing in Liberia right now? Yes, we have come to Liberia to talk to women's rights organization and to even talk to the government of Liberia. And what we want to say is that uh, we want Liberia to engage more at the national, at the regional and the international level conversations around human rights and the issues of, of women and girls. And we have come together here with more than uh, 40 civil society organizations, including government representatives. And we are uh, interrogating the system of Liberia, how the law addresses the issues and, uh, of violation of women and girls, how can we address the issues of violation, and not just in FGM, on issues of sexual and gender-based violence, on issues of sex trafficking, on issues of uh, uh, legal equality, whereby the law 
uh, is, does not present the same issue uh, to, to, to both genders in the same way, for example, on the law of, a, uh, of a nationality, mm -hmm. where there are women who might have children with husbands from different countries, but their children are not allowed to be citizens. Yeah. yeah. So we are discussing a whole spectrum of issues that uh, uh, are, are very key to the rights and the well-being of the women in, in Liberia. And even we are also here to discuss the SDGs and how Liberia as a, a country are trying to implement the SDGs because Liberia was one of the many countries around the world that said yes to the SDGs and to domesticating the SDGs in their uh, country. And we have come here to ask the civil society organizations and to the government of Liberia, how far have you come in terms of implementing uh, or domesticating the SDGs in Liberia? Yeah. My name is Felista Makandi Gitonga. I'm a program officer at Equality Now, focusing on the area of and harmful practices. Equality Now is an international and governmental organization that works around the world to end women's rights uh, violations. We use the law and advocacy to address various human rights violations against women and girls, and we focus on four thematic areas. One is End Harmful Practices, which focuses on child marriage and FGM, and sexual and gender-based violence, and sex trafficking and legal equality. Well, viewers, this is how we come to our end of today's edition of the program Channel Screen. I've been Grace Williamson today. We were discussing harmful traditional practice within Liberia. We were looking at FGM, a female genital mutilation, and we were discussing uh, with our guest, our international guest from uh, Kenya. She's with Equality Now, an organization that is against uh, FGM, against LGBT, and a lot more. Once you are against women's rights, you are against Equality Now. So if you want a more edition of the program Jenna Screen, do join me on Facebook, type in Grace Williams or CTV Africa to have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.